guys welcome back to techdoze and in this video we will look at the minimum number of removals to make a mountain array problem which is from lead code number 1671 we will be solving it using the most optimal technique there are certain prerequisites before you solve this problem the first prerequisite is to know about the lis which is longest increasing subsequence using the tabulation method or you can also go with the n log n method using the binary search lower bound approach so both these videos I have already made and you can check it out from the i button and also all the links are present in the description below. From here on onwards I will assume that you know how to find longest increasing subsequence in n log n time because this will be the most optimal approach to solve this problem. Now let's read the problem statement. In this problem it is mentioned that you may recall that an array ARR is a mountain array if and only if the array is of at least length 3. And there exists an index i which is not the first index and which is also not the last index it is somewhere in the middle so that if you go to the left hand side of i then all the elements will be strictly decreasing and if you go to the right hand side then all the elements will still be strictly decreasing so it will form in the form of a mountain okay so given an uh, integer array nums return the minimum number of elements to remove to make the nums as a mountain array right now let's look at the constraint before looking at an example in this case uh, they are giving a uh, maximum elements to be 1000 which is 10 to the power of 3 so definitely if you write an n cube algorithm then that is not going to work because that will be 10 to the power of 9 so anything which is n square and better than n square it will definitely work all the numbers are uh, within the integer range and it is guaranteed that you will always be able to make a mountain array out of the nums now let's look at an example for better understanding. In this case, we will take an array having seven elements. So here n is equals to seven. Now, if you try to make a mountain array, then we can, let's say, pick a element eight, and then we will try to find out the strictly decreasing items on the left side. If you try to include that, then I can say that I will be removing five to two, and then I can make a decreasing curve with only one. And you can also choose the same on the right hand side by uh, by not including this 9. You can say I will just include this 5 and I will make a strictly decreasing curve on the right hand side. If you do this, then we have made a mountain array. But the question asks about remove the minimum number of elements so that you get a mountain array. So you can just reframe this question to say that find the length of the longest mountain array because if you find the length of the longest mountain array then that will require minimum removals right so is this the length of the longest mountain array well uh, you can still increase the length let's say from 8 you could have uh, calculated a strictly decreasing curve with including 5 and 1 to the left hand side 5 and 1 or you could have included 8 to 1 that would be also a strictly decreasing curve and on the right side you could have included 9 or 5 whatever but in any of the scenarios that you make, I have included these two scenarios, the length of this mountain array will be maximum of four. Okay. And how many elements do I have? Seven. So if four is the length of the maximum mountain array size, then how many elements do I want to remove? We want to remove n minus four. That means seven minus four. So three items minimum have to be removed in this case so that you get the longest mountain array simply, right? isn't it and the constraints of this problem is the minimum length of the mountain array should be three that means when you define a peak element then there has to be at least one element to the left hand side which is less than the peak element and there should be at least one element to the right hand side which is actually greater than the peak element okay so minimum in order to form a mountain you should have a peak element left side element and the right side element so definitely the minimum length has to be three and definitely this peak element therefore cannot be the first item of the array or it cannot be the last item because if you consider the first item then on the left hand side you don't have anything and if you consider peak as the uh, as the last item then on the right hand side you don't have anything right so peak has to occur somewhere in between the second index and the second last index one of the other constraint was it is an strictly increasing and decreasing array so that a strictly increasing array is where the elements are never repeating okay so i cannot say that one two two is strictly increasing no this is called a non-decreasing curve okay and if i say one two three it is strictly increasing right so a strictly increasing curve on the left side strictly decreasing on the right side in the problem statement it, it was also mentioned that the mountain array is always guaranteed now if you look at this closely then what we are trying to do is we are trying to form the longest mountain array so if i pick a peak point let's say 8 
then I will always try to find the increasing subsequence until I reach 8 on the left hand side and increasing subsequence from right to left ending at this 8, right? So if I want the maximum mountain array size, then don't you think this increasing subsequence will be the longest increasing subsequence? And it is greedily true. And if you find the increasing subsequence from the right hand side, it has to be the longest increasing subsequence. Taking this into consideration, the longest increasing subsequence on the left and right of this point, that is the peak element, uh, we will be adding them to get the maximum mountain array size. But how do you know which is the peak element? Well, we have to try for all the elements from 1, 2, 3 and so on from the first item to the second last item. Or you can generalize it and, uh, and solve from first to the last item, right? So our idea is if the array is given, then first of all, I will be finding the LIS length uh, including a subarray. So let's say if I say LIS length from left to right at index 3 is equals to 2. What is the meaning of this? It means that if I take all the items from the beginning to index 3, then the LIS length will be of length 2, uh, two here. Okay. This is the meaning. So I will be finding out the longest increasing subsequence length from left to right. And also I will be finding the longest increasing subsequence length from right to left. Okay. So that I will be trying out, let's say if 2 is the peak element, then the LIS from the left side and the LIS from the right side will get added to tell you what will be the maximum mountain array size if 2 is selected as the peak element, right? So this is the idea. Again, I am repeating that we are uh, taking each item one by one as the peak element and then we are trying to find the longest increasing subsequence from left to right and longest increasing subsequence from right to left, okay? And we will be doing this for all the points and we will be tracking the maximum mountain array size. Now, let me give you a dry run of the LIS in N log N since you have already watched my video. Let me do it very quickly. We will be using the binary search lower bound. This means that if I am doing lower bound in an element X, then it will give me the first index where X occurs or if X is not present, then the first index where we find an element greater than X, right? Otherwise, it can go out of bound as well. So in this case, I will be taking an LIS which will be maintaining the current longest increasing subsequence in that video, I had told that this LIS will not exactly give you the uh, a, uh, the exact longest increasing subsequence, but it will always give you the correct length. So this n log n technique is used only for length, but not for exact LIS answer. So you should keep this in mind. And I will be taking a LIS length, which is uh, technically LIS from left to right. Okay. Now initially, I will prefill all the values with one, saying that at least one element can be included and an is length of one is always possible because what if i talk about this two even if i uh, do not consider any of these values even if it was zero or minus two still at least one item can be included to make an lis of length one length one lis is always possible with any element value and that is why the lis length one is prefilled now let's try to form the LIS. Whenever I uh, see the element, I will find the lower bound of that element in the LIS array. So since it is empty, the lower bound will give you index zero. That means out of bound. And so whenever you go out of bound, you have to push back into the list, push it at the end. And then what is the length here? The LIS length is one. Therefore at index zero, the LIS, which you found to the left side, including this zero will be of length one only. Now let's go to the next item. At this 5, you will find the lower bound of 5 and it will again uh, re reach to outer bound. So we will be pushing back this 5 into the LIS array. Now at this one, what will be the LIS length? It will be the maximum of already known LIS and whatever uh, is the LIS size. So the array size is 2. So I will be updating this to 2. Now I'll do the same for this 2. If you find the lower bound, then it will stop at this 5 okay because since there is no element 2 so it will always stop at an element which is greater than 2 and is the first occurrence so it will stop at 5 so that means you have to overwrite this 5 by 2 now what is the lis length it is of length 2 so at index 2 you know that there will be a lis of length 2 if you consider the sub array from 0 to 2 okay now let's go to the next item 4 now find out the lower bound it will stop out of bound so you just push back 4 and what is the size 3 so just update this to 3. Go to this 2. Find the lower bound of this 2. It will stop at index 1 which is 2 itself. So if you overwrite it will be the same value. Now what is the size of LIS? It is 3. So you can write 3 here. Now let's go to the next item which is 7. So if you find the lower bound it will stop out of bound. 
and you have to push back 7 what is the size it is 4 so update here 4 so this will be the LIS when you calculate from left to right and what is the value uh, 3 meaning here it means that if you have all the elements from 0 to 4 and considering this a part of the sub array what will be the LIS that you can find LIS will be of length 3 uh, one such example can be 1 to 4 right so I hope you have understood how to do this now this is totally n log n because uh, the lower bound is log n using binary search and then uh, we are doing it n number of times for each of the element one by one right now having known uh, how to calculate the LIS in n log n time I will be taking an array and I will be pre-processing this array and find the LIS moving from left to right and also the LIS moving from right to left okay so n left to right when I say that LIS at 2 is 2 this means that when I have these first two items then what will be the LIS it can be 1 comma 5 or 1 comma 2 so the length is 2 therefore I have written 2 value here right and if you consider the other portion like when I was moving from right to left LIS RL then this index 6 here indicates that if I was considering the items from index 8 uh, till the index 6 then what will be the length of LIS so it will be of length 3 which is 369 right and if you consider this index 3 then the LIS length is 3 as well this means if you have all the elements from 8 to 3 then what will be the LIS moving from right to left it will still be of length 3 which is let's say 369 or you can take 368 or 358 or whatever right you cannot exceed this length 3 so I hope you have understood this LIS LR and LIS RL now according to our idea we will try to move uh, to each of the index one by one and we will try to assume them as the peak element right so let's do that uh, if we pick the peak element as this index number 0 then what I do is I will be finding the LIS from the left hand side till the peak element so the LIS is here of length 1 so this will not be considered as valid because if you have the peak element and if you are considering the LIS from left to right then the problem statement already mentions that you should at least have a single element on the left hand side which is lower than the peak element so there the LIS value must be greater than 1 okay it, it should be 2 minimum and here the LIS value is 1 so this will not be counted as a valid uh, mountain array so I'll be moving on to the next item this is 5 so what is the LIS moving from left to right the LIS moving from left to right is of length 2 so this is greater than 1 and it is valid but then LIS also from moving from right to left and ending at this peak item must also be greater than 1 so if you look at this index 1 what is this saying it, uh, this value 3 means if you had calculated the LIS from right index 8 and ending at 1 then your value would have been 3 right so if you take the sub array from 1 to 8 your LIS will come uh, come out to be 3 moving from right to left okay so both the conditions are valid and therefore uh, the mountain array size will be 2 LIS from left to right so one element must be on the left side and one is peak element and this 3 means everything from right to left okay so since we are double counting this peak element we have to subtract one value from it so it will be 2 plus 3 which is 5 minus 1 4 so you know that this mountain is of size 4 and the maximum mountain size will be taken as 0 initially and so we will be updating this to 4 we want to maximize this value so we will always ignore any input where the LIS from left to right at i is 1 or right to left is 1 we know that so let's proceed to index number 2 now when we go here LIS at uh, from left to right is 2 right to left is uh, 3 so 2 plus 3 is 5 minus 1 is 4 so it is already 4 so no update will happen again if you keep repeating you will get a 2 and 3 again it again this will come as 4 if you come to this 8 then again you will get 3 and 3 and this will be 3 plus 3 6 minus 1 5 so this will be updated to 5 right so the maximum mountain size is 5 now if you go to this 5 then it will be 3 plus 3 against 6 minus 1 will be 5 again if you go to this 9 it will be uh, LIS from left to right is 4 LIS from right to left is 3 so that means 4 plus 3 is 7 7 minus 1 is 6 so 6 will get updated if you go to this 6 again then LIS left to right is 4 right to left is 2 so 4 plus 2 minus 1 is 5 so no update will happen because we have a higher mountain size and this 3 will not be considered because here LIS at RL is 1 so this is invalid right so what we found as the maximum mountain size is 6 and therefore the minimum number of elements to be removed will be n minus this maximum mountain size which will be 3 
so three will be your answer the time complexity of this approach is for pre-processing we were finding the lis from left to right and right to left two times and log n plus we were iterating and finding the maximum mountain size and therefore the total time complexity will be n log n the space complexity is order of n due to the extra space taken to remember the lis length let us now look at the code if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this code we are given the numsare and uh, we will be finding the size how many items are there then i will be calculating lis uh, from l to r that means left to right okay and this is the code for finding LIS in n log n time that I had already explained in my previous video. Now, uh, what I will do is when I want to calculate from left to right, I will write this piece of code. But if I have to reuse this piece of code, then I will be reversing my given array so that in order to calculate the LIS from right to left, I will reverse it. So this will make it equivalent to calculate LIS from left to right. And again, I will be uh, calling the same API, which is find out the LIS. And once this is returned, then I will be reversing again uh, the LIS from right to left because I don't want it to be from left to right all the time. Yes, you can skip this reversal uh, at line number 20. But then always whenever you take LIS, uh, LIS R, L, R at I, then you have to always calculate it with LIS R, L at index N minus I, right? If you don't want to do this N minus I, if you just want to keep it I, then you have to reverse this. If you think it carefully, you will understand what we are doing here. Now, after this, uh, we have to take the maximum mountain size as zero and we will try to maximize the mountain array, right? Then I will be picking each of the item one by one to be the peak element. And as we know that whenever you pick a peak element, at least you should have one item to the left hand side. So LIS LR at I must be greater than one. And also you should have at least one item to the right hand side. So LIS RL should be at least greater than one. And once we have done this, then addition of these two LIS, that means the mountain array size here calculated must be greater than the already known mountain array size. Otherwise, we will not update it. And if this is the case, then we will update it to the new mountain array size. So at the end, in line, by line number 29, we will know the maximum mountain array size and we know the total number of elements. So if you subtract the maximum mountain array size from the total number of elements we will get the minimum number of elements to be removed in order to uh, get the mountain array so i hope you were able to understand this approach if you still have any doubt feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video see you guys in the next video thank you